Welcome to Custom Technical University and our top five tips for installing movement joints in tile assemblies. Did you know the number one cause of tile failure is a lack of movement joints? If you'd like to avoid tenting, cracking, and broken tile on your projects, learn all you can about movement joints. All construction materials will experience motion, and sometimes they'll move a lot, or very quickly, due to factors like thermal cycling or deflection. Entire buildings expand and contract. Concrete slabs move due to live and dead loads. They may sag or creep over time. And even well-bonded tile can crack and come right off the surface. So what's the solution? Tip number one, accommodate expected movement. Tile assemblies should be designed to sustain dynamic forces by moving along with them. And in certain conditions, like direct sun or freezing and thawing, the tiles themselves will actually be in motion. For example, in a 90-foot span of a dark tile, up to 8 inches of space is needed to accommodate the movement that can take place on a hot sunny day. So soft, flexible joints within the tile assembly will help accommodate the inevitable expansion and contraction. Movement joint fillers will absorb compression during expansion, whereas tile and grout, they're just not designed to compress. Flexible sealants will return to the original size after compression from tile expansion over and over and day in and day out, and this we refer to as cycling. Throughout this video, we'll be turning to detail EJ171 movement joint guidelines in the Tile Council of North America's handbook to get more information on these details. EJ171 begins, perimeter and field movement joints within a tile installation are essential and required. That phrase is the single most important takeaway on this topic. These soft movement joints are installed at changes of plane and set intervals based on project conditions. Joints in the slab are also honored when carried up through the tile assembly. So give your tile these breaks or they'll break later on their own. Tip number two, understand the joints in a concrete slab. There are many types of joints in concrete. Some are designed to move, Others may or may not move in the future. TCNA recognizes and lists the most common types. You can differentiate and treat them based on their function. For example, a construction or cold joint is formed between placements of concrete during the pour. Control, contraction, or saw cut joints, they're added during or shortly after placement, and they help regulate expected cracking during the curing of the slab. Expansion joints, they're created at adjoining parts of the structure and they accommodate anticipated expansion beyond contraction. Isolation joints are located at changes of plane, such as columns, where vertical or differential movement is expected. Joints that are designed to move out of plane should never be covered with any type of floor covering. Tip number three, carry the joints through the tile work. According to TCNA, all of these joints are considered active and they must be carried through the tile assembly. That means creating soft, flexible joints at the same width of those in the slab directly below. Typically, they'll follow the line of the cold joint or expansion joint in the concrete. For joints that are considered static by the project design team, such as a control joint, material manufacturers may recommend treatment with an ANSI A118.12 crack isolation membrane. In some cases, a sawtooth pattern following a joint in parallel may be allowed along with soft joints. Tip number four, follow TCNA detail EJ171 recommendations. According to these guidelines, movement joint location and details are the responsibility of the design professional or the project engineer. If they haven't been provided in the drawings, you'll need to submit an RFI or a request for information. Joint placement is based on dynamic elements, such as joints in the slab. Variables like frequency and width, these depend on location and climatic conditions. These requirements are designed to manage expected movement based on thermal cycling and deflection. Here are the default placements for each direction. For interior spaces, the maximum allowance is every 25 feet. When interiors are exposed to direct sunlight or moisture, that requirement doubles. Spacing comes down to every 12 feet. 
For an above ground slab, which can expect higher levels of deflection, the maximum spacing is also 12 feet. Due to anticipated thermal expansion and water exposure, exterior applications require movement joints every 8 to 12 feet, depending on materials and conditions. Perimeter joints are always required at walls, changes of plane, or any restraining surface, including other floor coverings, especially over wood frame construction. Joint widths are calculated with a formula based on the linear thermal expansion of your tile. Your design team can refer to EJ171 for the mathematical calculations. For exteriors, the minimum width is 3 eighths of an inch. Some interior joints can go as narrow as an eighth of an inch, but a quarter of an inch is preferred, and it's required for all areas exposed to sun or moisture. Tip number five, install soft joints properly. Movement joints can be subtle and complement the tile design. Just use a sealant that's color matched to your grout. And the joint filler needs to remain permanently flexible. So choose a 100% solid silicone sealant that complies with ASTM C920. On commercial projects, the minimum joint width is typically no less than a quarter of an inch. And the ratio of width to depth is two to one. ASTM C1193 details how the joint should be properly filled. One very critical aspect of installation is that the joints need to be completely clear of mortars and grouts prior to using the sealant. It's also helpful to tape the top of the tile on either side of the joint for easy cleanup. Place the compressible backup strip in the bottom of the joint, then add the sealant above it. The sealant should adhere to the sides of the adjacent tiles, but not to the back of rod or substrate. And it's also acceptable to use a preformed movement joint in lieu of using sealant. Placement of movement joints is crucially important for successful tile installations and to maintain a good reputation for our industry. They are also a requirement of any custom systems warranties. I urge you to read and refer back to EJ171 in the current TCNA handbook for full information on installing movement joints. If you'd like to know more about protecting your next project, please visit our website, custombuildingproducts.com, or give us a call. And be sure to like our video, share it, and subscribe it for the latest tips on tile installation. Thanks again for joining us at Custom Technical University. We'll see you at our next edition of Custom's Top 5 Tips. Mm -hmm.